Moss already fry. Oh, beautiful Ooh. comment to the takedown. Thank you for joining us tonight. No disadvantage desire, but then he. Oh, oh, too much on tricks. Nice shooting. Good turning. What's going on YouTube? Watching from around the world tonight. I know the UFC isn't on right now, but guess what? The virtual octagon is here. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, everyone in between, welcome to an amazing event that we have for you tonight. Sometimes if you want to reach to the top, sometimes you have to go through a chaos. And that's what we're presenting to you here as we present ESFLW Anarchy. I am your host and commentator, Kingsley. Alongside me is someone who is making his debut in the ESFLW, commentating in the booth for the first time in a long time. Frank, how are you doing today, man? Man, I am fantastic. I am even better to be back in the booth, and it's going to be a huge wrestling weekend, Kingsley. We've got Night of Champions going on right now. We've got ESFLW happening right now, and then we've got Double or Nothing tomorrow. I personally am fired up. I'm ready to get into it, and I'm, again, just thrilled to be here with you and the ESFL crew, man. Always a great time. Yeah, it's going to be an incredible wrestling weekend, and especially NXT Battleground. That's also going to be happening tomorrow. But right now, ESFLW Anarchy, we have five amazing matches as we go through the rundown for it. Um, as you see, we have so many incredible matches. A title is going to be on the line, Frank. The Xbox Series X title that was supposed to be defended at ESFLW Running Back is going to be the main event between two undefeated. Jinja, the current champ, going against DB Cryptomania, who earned this opportunity going against JoJo. He's in the top spot. How do you feel that match is going to play out with all our other matches? Man, uh, listen, I feel like every match that we have is going to be a good one, but there's always something special about a title fight. It doesn't matter what sport it is. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, wrestling, whether it's MMA, whether it's it's boxing. Title fights are always special, and I anticipate that nothing will change in our main event this evening. Um, curious to see, you know, both these guys are undefeated. Who's going to let that go to their head? Who's going to be willing to come in and make adjustments? What's going to happen, man? I'm just excited to get into it. Who knows what's going to happen? Anything can happen here in the ESFLW, especially whenever we got a little bit of anarchy afoot. So I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, absolutely. Anarchy is the name of the game, especially on our Xbox side. We have a tons of matches on the PlayStation side. And the co-main event is going to be graphics undefeated 4-0 going against the returning Hollywood Mud, a former number one contender, won the Royal Rumble last year, was supposed to uh, fight at ESFLW Mania. He is going to be taking his rightful spot back in the co-main spot. And then we have another title match, the Iron Woman matchup between Miss Muggs versus Johnny B. They've been going after each other, but now it's going to be an Iron Woman match for 20 minutes whoever gets the longest pit whoever gets the most pins wins that match and then at, before that that is going to be our first match of the evening on the xbox side it is going to be Rasputin versus ant-man so a lot of matches a lot of anarchy with no holds barred false call anywhere iron women 20 minute matchup it's going to be absolutely insane but frank We've been talking long enough. It's time to get into our first match, and this is going to be on the Xbox side. As we said, a no-holds-barred match as they're both in the fire selection screen. We see Russ Buren going with a Cody Rhodes here. What do you think uh, Cody Rhodes is going to do in this matchup since it's WWE 2K23? Well, uh, if I had to guess, we're going to see at least one crossroads at one point. Uh, just <laughs> No, but in all seriousness, Cody Rhodes has a very fun moveset. I feel like he's one of the few that they have done a great job of capturing the things you see him do on Monday nights, and then they just, you know, were able to to really accurately represent his moveset. I'm curious to see what he's going to do against Brock Lesnar, you know, whenever I get a chance to watch Night of Champions later today. But here in the ESFLW No Holds Barred match, I'm curious to see, is Cody going to be able to get that grit to him you know, who's going to be the first to go for a weapon? Is it going to be Cody? Is it going to be his opponent? And how is that going to change the, uh, the the shape of this match, man? No holds barred. It can turn on its head in an instant. The second somebody grabs a sledgehammer or oh a trash you speak and of the devil and Brock Lesnar appears. Speaking of the devil, <laughs> a little bit of a preview of Night of Champions, which is going on right now. And man going for Brock Lesnar. He is new to the ESFLW. He is making his debut. He's a wild card on the scene. But as you said, Rasputin going with the Cody Rhodes. He wants to put all his losses from JoJo aside and start and out crashing you with the first victory. So here we go. Again, Rasputin as Cody Rhodes going against Ant-Man as Brock Lesnar as we get a little bit of a delay. But now we're into the match, Frank. And 
as you see here, we know that Brock Lesnar has the power. Ant Man is a complete wild card, so we have to know what his strategy is going to be. But for Rasputin, he's been proven to be in the spotlight. He knows what he wants to do, and so far, it looks like Ant Man is taking the pros, and now he's moving right now. But as you see, Frank, we see the table now it's been in this no holds barred match. Yeah, they are wasting no time to start rearranging furniture, and honestly, I love it, man. Let's get this. <laughs> let, let's let's mess each other up ASAP. Now you see a yeah. bit of a uh, mental warfare from you said. I'm oh, sorry. You said Rasputin is using Cody Rhodes. Yes. Okay, just double checking. Yeah, seeing a bit of the mental warfare there early with the the walking circles around him and getting the the crowd on his side with the taunts, but now it seems like Ant Man's woken up and he's trying to put Cody to sleep here. Yeah, trying to lull him into a nice complacency, but with a nice bulldog like that, Rasputin is taking advantage, trying to go for a springboard, a disaster kick, only nothing but disaster, as we see Ant-Man with a nice Larry at the clothesline onto Cody Rhodes right here, and as we start Anarchy, ESFLW Anarchy, the tables, the chairs, everything is all legal, but the main thing is you have to get the pin inside the ring. You can fight anywhere outside the ring, but you need to get the pin inside, and that's what Rasputin is too. Keeping the action in the ring, fighting when Brock Lesnar's down the ground with a nice center right there. And so far, Rasputin has to be proven that he's taking advantage of this contest. Yeah, he also hit a beautiful straight jacket DDT, one of my favorite moves in the game uh, a few moments ago. Now, yeah, oh, <laughs> getting, getting the chair shots coming early and often here is Cody Rhodes, but Brock Lesnar doesn't care, man. That right hand is dangerous, and he's willing to show Cody, hey, man, UFC heavyweights can't stand up to this. Why do you think you can yeah, and now I mean, Brock Lesnar is going to get the chair himself to do his own bit of destruction. But yeah, Cody's but doing gets... a great job using his speed. Sorry, go ahead, Kingsley. No, you're totally fine. But again, the action has been crazy fast paced than what we usually see in the ESFLW. But right now, we're seeing the announcer table getting moved. And, and you have to think, with all the durability of Brock Lesnar, he has the right chance, even though he's down low with the screen bar held, that means he could get up a little bit further. He, he still has a chance to come back. I mean, the blue bars is getting very close for Cody Rhodes. Rasputin is very close to his signature. But right now, again, the counters, the chess match is happening for Ant-Man. Knowing that he wants to be proven that he could be in the ESFLW. But right here, what a nice DDT from Rasputin. That's only going to prove as a bigger challenge for Ant-Man here, Frank. Yes, but now Cody's starting to win himself a little bit. And now Brock is looking like he's trying to get back onto the offensive, getting into the full amount, raining down shots. I can think of 17 million places I would rather be than on the ground with Brock Lesnar on top of me. Yeah, absolutely. And again, the get my game is trying to figure out the moves. Maybe this is a usually not his character selection, but when he saw the Cody Rhodes pick, he was like, okay, maybe I use Brock Lesnar to try to get into his head, try to get the mental edge right here. And as we see, the suplexes coming uh -oh. in. As the signature is happening, we're going through a ride through suplex scene here, Frank. As we see, the third one connects near the chair. Yes, sir, Cody Rhodes did not see the sign saying Suplex City toll ahead, and he had to pay that price from Officer Lesnar. Yeah, Officer Lesnar just doing his duty of bringing Cody Rhodes out. And right now, you see Cody Rhodes trying to find a way, but a nice counter. Rasputin has his signature. He could go for a vertebra breaker outside the ring, but he keeps on looking. Oh, there it goes. Like vertebra breaker <laughs> landing, connecting. But you can't get the pin just yet outside the ring. You need to get the pin inside. But when Brock Lesnar is stunned, Ant-Man cannot find a reversal. You have to think he might go He's for got to. a crossroads, yep. but... The announcer table right here, Frank. We might see something big. Yeah, that's what I was hoping for. You said he might go for a crossroads. Nah, man. Me, personally, I'm going straight to the announce desk just like he did. And, ah. uh, yeah, now these guys got to do the match standing up. They'll be okay. They'll be just fine. Cody Rhodes trying to see if he can put the finishing touches on this, but Brock Lesnar is not done yet. You've got to go through a lot more to get Brock Lesnar out of there, and he's trying to show that to Cody Rhodes right now. And, you know, the craziest thing is that that was a brain buster on the announcer table, which would bring anybody what? down. But with Brock Lesnar, it's in that <laughs> That might be ball game right there as the referee goes for the pickup. And it's even a one count, count here, Frank. Wow. Barely a one count. What is, what is fueling Cody Rhodes to kick out of a thunderous F5 at one Kingsley? It has to be the adrenaline in his soul, who right now in his soul is getting hit with a brain buster right here. Oh, but a possible pin. pin. Trying to get the pin right here. One. Only a one count again. What is it going to take for Brock Lesnar to stay down? Ant-Man has chosen the right wrestler, but Cody Rhodes has been a meta pick in WWE 2K23. Now taking a little bit of time outside the ring, but we see the table getting situated into the corner. Cody 
Rasputin carefully going inside. Gets an Irish whip. Oh, Ant-Man. Think of dangerous intentions here, Frank. Oh, oh. this spear. Oh. I was just about to say it was great timing by Ant-Man to uh, get the Irish whip as soon as he's getting into the ring. And, oh, my God. The spear through the table. That's, that's not conducive to anybody's health. But Cody's looking like he's still fired up trying to get back into this match and try to get uh, the upper hand once again. Yeah, he's he had a hard... Oh, go ahead, Frank. He's had a hard time keeping damage on Brock Lesnar, but right now he seems like he's on a good offensive run. He's trying to keep it up, and Lesnar says, nah, we're good on that, man. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and get back to business as usual. He's just chucking him around the ring as Lesnar does. Yeah, he's chucking him around, and that's the main power of Brock Lesnar, the grappling, the strength of lifting his opponent up. But with a bulldog like that, Rasputin still has a chance, still has an opportunity. He has a finisher stored and ready to go. If he finds a right uh, situation to go for his signature, he might have a chance. But right now, going for a window, a candlestick to start things off. It slams him with Brock, but Brock gets a nice counter back to back. And now he has a signature and a finisher himself. Now here we go, chess game right here. Punches back and forth. Brock Lesnar gets the advantage. Good counter from Rasputin with a reverse both, DDT. Both these guys have each other so well scouted. Now I'm just gonna, my own personal, I think it would have been awesome if Cody could reverse that into a crossroads. Obviously, mm. I know the mechanical limitations, but once again, a huge reversal by Lesnar, not letting Cody Rhodes get any momentum going. Oh my yeah. goodness, a thunderous clothesline once again sends Cody to the canvas. He could look to finish it here with the F5, Kingsley. I'm I'm curious he why he's not, to be honest. Yeah, it's very curious. He had a finisher. He could have done it anytime he wanted. Uh, when he has that stun meter on top of his head, that means he can't do any reversals in this contest. But now it's gone away. But wait a minute. Turn about his fair play as a crossroad lands and not going for the pin. I think he wants to do some more damage. He's going yep. for another one into a burner breaker. Now he's going for the pin. We'll see if that's enough. One, two, two. And that's what? enough. Cody oh. Rhodes puts down the beast Brock Lesnar with a crossroads followed by a vertebraker. Hey, man, Cody did a great job of using his speed and not trying to let uh, Lesnar get into the match. We all know about the thunderous, dangerous power of Brock Lesnar. But again, uh, Rasputin using Cody Rhodes did a fantastic job of just using his speed, never being in the same place too long. So he can't take too much of that damage. And, uh, you know, he still had a lot of adversity to to walk his way out of and was able to do that through the adrenaline in his soul. Something, something, Cody Rhodes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and speaking of which, the I think the biggest part of that whole match was the later parts. When we saw Brock Lesnar, he had Rasputin, uh, Cody Rhodes, stunned for the longest time, but he said went for a clothesline. That could have been just the early, like, jitters of being in the ESFLW, going for your debut. He had his sore finisher. He could have gone for another FI, but decided to not do it, and that led to a costly uh, crossroads into a vertebraker as Rasputin, the proven vet, was able to get his first victory of the season, putting a whole new fresh start and maybe could climb his way towards when we have our next events, maybe get himself up the leaderboards a little bit as we're going forward and forward of ESFLW Anarchy. But again, this is our show, ESFL Anarchy, live here on Twitch and on YouTube. Again, I am your host, commentator Kingsley. Alongside me is Frank. For your first match, Frank, how exciting was that? Are you excited for four more matches that we possibly have in this whole card? I mean, it was all right. No, in all seriousness, <laughs> man. Great match, <laughs> wonderful way to start things off. I don't know. I might have to sip on a little Haterade today. Well, that's, that's neither here nor there. Okay. Um, is, it, is it because Brock Lesnar lost? Is it because the suplexes you were trying to... Like you were room for Brock Lesnar, you could be honest here. It's an honest no, face, right? Seriousness, man. I just, I was hoping that whenever they broke the commentary table, you might have caught like a stray boot to the mouth. But since what? I can't have all of my dreams come true, I guess I'll deal with the banger room match to start us off, man. Uh, okay, I'll, no, that was. I remember that. <laughs> remember, write it down. Take a picture. Huh? Anyway. Uh, yeah, I, I for you. But speaking of things getting hit with a boo, this next matchup might be a bit of a banger because next is our first ever women's championship match, and it's gonna be a 20-minute iron woman matchup between Miss Muggs, who has been the stable of the women's division, going against Johnny B, who has been a fierce rival against Miss Muggs. Frank, when you think about an Iron Man or Iron Woman match, what goes into your senses as we get to the fire selection screen uh as we see both of them going for Rhea Ripley? I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch your question. What was... I was saying, uh, what is your instant thoughts when you think of an Iron Man or Iron Woman match? 
Uh, well, instant thought is obviously, I think, the most uh, famous Iron Man match, Bret Hart versus Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 12. But a bit of recency bias, MJF versus Brian Danielson had won a half of an Iron Man match at um at Revolution this, this year. Fantastic event. Um, I, I love Iron Man matches because it's not necessarily to me about who's got the most pins or points at the end of that time. It's about the story you tell to get there, man. And uh, I feel like Danielson and MJF, first of all, two of the best at what they do. They did a fantastic job for the entire 60 minutes of telling a story. Um, and that, to me, you know, stood out on the page way above the, the wrestling, which was still spectacular. Yeah, and you can see, taking a little bit of a, a homage to Knife Champions that's happening right now, we see Rhea Ripley making her entrance with Miss Muggs. Now, Miss Muggs, to give you a little bit of backstory, Frank, has been... Two and two lately in the season has been going through a crazy, crazy matchup with Johnny B with graphics and was able to get the victory against Johnny B to lead to an opportunity of the women's championship. Will they finally be a staple of the division, be the face of the franchise? And with 20 minutes, that means not only that you need to get one pin, you need to get multiple pins and I'll best your opponent here, Frank. Do you think Miss Bucks could possibly do this? Um... Yeah, obviously. I mean, if somebody's picking up the controller, they can do it. You know, it's just a matter of will Miss Muggs be able to get it done? Mm. And well, that's a matter of what remains to be seen. These two, I did watch their match at running back. They had a banger of a match then. I expect no different now. Um, Rhea Ripley's a total badass, man. That's that's really all that, that there is to be said about that. Um, I, I anticipate this match is going to be awesome. I cannot wait to see what these two have in store for us. I know that they are, are chomping at the bit to get at each other because, as you had mentioned, they have had several epic showdowns over the past uh, few weeks uh, here in ESFLW. So who's yeah. going to be the final one to come out on top with that women's championship? Yeah, it, it, the context is that they have been on, on ESFLW Ascension and ESFLW Run It Back in mania they have been through some barn burners extreme rules matches single competitions no holds bar false count anywhere this time they need to finally sell it and with mm. the knife wonder of the world johnny b's staple pick he wants to prove that he is the dominant champion that he deserves to be in this opportunity even though the record may show that they're both barely even with these two competitors this might be a whole different story might be a, a ending of the whole book with this last saga that they're gonna have but with china we know her her game she has a pedigree as a signature she has a power bomb as a finisher she knows how to control the ring and everything around it it's gonna be very interesting what johnny b has to do because again as we said they have faced each other so many times so when you get into the mindset like it's a game seven here frank what is the mentality that they need to have knowing that all their cards are on the table? Domination. That should be the only goal going into this match for both competitors. You've had back and forth the entirety of, you know, however long this rivalry has been going on. You got to put that feather in the cap. You got to finish this with no questions. You need to try to assert dominance. And here we see the ring around the rosy technique that both of these competitors are employing. <laughs> Whoever's on the left side at the end of the match wins. That's the way it looks. No, but in all seriousness, man, you just, you got to come out there and be the one that gets the upper hand early and often. The first pinfall is always the most important in an Iron Man match, at least in my opinion. Absolutely. As you see, it's clock is ticking down from 20 minutes. So by 20 minutes, we will have a definitive women's Ooh. champion. And again, Miss Bucks is using Rhea Ripley. And then China is being used by Johnny B. And right now, we're seeing a little bit of a, no, not a slice bread, but a nice power slam from Johnny B. <laughs> able to answer the bell and try to get the answer back. But again, chess matches. This is where the game is going to be won. Who can make the least amount of mistakes? Who can reverse up? And you can see already the bad blood showing in it's not just like a regular match when they just go into their normal strikes they want to prove a point saying you know what we've been facing each other for so long it's time to sell it time to bring it down and i want to taunt you in any mental way to bring you down but right now a nice suplex a nice time for miss mugs and now with the buff that she has from the taunt what can she do can she bring china down mainly to the ground but what strikes like that <laughs> it's not going down by any means no, man. China is just as much a powerhouse as Rhea Ripley. Everything I said in the intro about Rhea being such a badass also stands true for China, and she did it first. Um, 
I've got massive respect for China, um, you know, in, in the industry of professional wrestling. And it's great to see Rhea being able to pick up that torch and carry it. But uh, this isn't about, you know, who's who's bearing the torch and the standard. This is about beating the hell out of one another. And right now, Rhea seems to be um, on the on the front foot in that regard. A huge slam to the barricade. You see China's already got yellow body health and Rhea's looking fresh as a daisy. She's going to be looking to keep this up. Uh, Miss Muggs is going to be trying to keep this domination up the entirety of the match. But China, huge running power slam. That might turn the tables back in her favor, Kingsley. Yeah, it was a little bit of a turnabout as fair play because we saw Rhea Ripley. You talk about China's uh, Hall of Fame status, the way she was in D-Generation X, the way she's a high-caliber athlete. Rhea Ripley just tossed her outside the ring like she was like yesterday's trash. But now we see a little bit of a run back of where they're just going back and forth, the instant recovery that China's going to have because she is so durable that that green health is going to help her to bring up. But with a big boot like that, Miss Muggs knows where her attributes are. It's going to be in the striking. It's going to be a little bit of the grappling, but you need to keep China off her like standard axis. You need to make sure that she's on the ground, that she is not comfortable. And with a high-risk maneuver like this, Frank, we might see something crazy as we see a dive of misses out there. And now it's up to China to take advantage. Swing big, miss big. And that's what we just saw there from Rhea Ripley. Um, I'm going to be honest, Kingsley. This is just me personally. I'm wondering if anybody's gonna be willing to cheat to get this W. This is a title <laughs> match. Like I'm, I'm the type, right? I'm gonna try and hit the ref one good time and go, go pull a chair or something. Get a couple of good shots in with that. See if I can get a bit of an advantage. Or hell, I'm not, I'm not above giving up a fall if I can hit you in the head with a chair. Yeah, all right, you got one point on the board. But if I just keep beating the piss out of you, I'll, I'll get it back. No, but so, wait a minute. You, you have to be honorable when it's a, like a championship match. You can't just take any shortcuts. Like, you can't put honor around again? your waist. You can't Come put on. honor around your waist and call yourself a champion with honor. You need to be able to, you need to be winning, willing to do whatever it takes to win. And if they're not willing to do that, I'm not willing to call them a champion personally. Listen, by being a champion, that means you hold the highest prestige in your division. So by going by any little shortcuts, we saw shortcuts being used in the SFLW running back in previous events. And look how that landed when they always lose. So you need to take the honorable step right here. And right now, <laughs> Miss Muggs is doing the right thing right here. Even though it's taking it to the outside, it's in the legal parameters. You don't want to get DQ because by one fall the first fall is going to be very important and you see the count out is already to four with a power sign being landed by china if you do it the right way that means you have a better chance of winning it in the long run no you don't you just you're just working harder for nothing i mean you said the people who took shortcuts weren't able to get the wins well they did something wrong they probably got caught they probably didn't cheat hard enough they didn't try hard enough listen you said being the champion means you've got the highest prestige in your division no it doesn't being champion means you are better than everybody else by any means possible. Quite simply, at the end of the day, that's why they give you the big shiny belt. So if you're not willing to do whatever you need to do to be better than whoever you need to be better than, why would you be willing to call yourself a champion? I'm not afraid to bend or snap the rules like somebody else's leg if it gets me what I want, Kingsley. And what I would want if I'm in this match is that win, that decisive win, and that ESFLW women's title. So... To that end, I mean, why not have some liberties? Why not do what you got to do? Fight, work smarter, not harder. Yeah, well, we'll have to see as we, again, our five minutes have we left. We're down to under 15 minutes in this Iron Woman matchup for the Women's Championship. Again, Miss Bugs is using Rhea Ripley, and Johnny B is using China, China lifting up Rhea Ripley, but a nice counter from Miss Muggs. Miss Muggs trying to find a way to find a northern lights able to get it and the referee getting closer and closer to the five count getting halfway to the 10 count which would be a fall for one of these comparisons but now miss muggs with a no a, a face buster Smart. i think it's gonna be an electric chair but frank so far oh and now we see miss muggs perfect no, you they gave don't want to win it by a count out. You have to win it honorably, and that's no, you don't. the point. No, you don't. You need more points than your opponent when time goes out. Count out leads to a point. Why would you leave points on the table? That's all I'm saying. If this comes back, comes back to bite Miss Muggs, I told you so. I'll say it. I don't mm. mind. <laughs> you all had, right. you had your first point there, free one, and you gave it up. Well, as you see here, a nice counter from Miss Muggs as she has two finishers on the way. It could go for a rip tie. Any means possible. China is on her last legs. 
Johnny B gets hit with a suplex, a nice German suplex. Getting closer and closer to the side meter. If they get the first a fall, but again, the nice counter. Getting so close to the side meter, but not able to answer. Good dodge, but now it's going back and forth. Who is going to get the first? Nice uh, super kick into possibly a signature. Can't really go for it. Leaves up. No, tries to go for Fisher, able to disrupt, and now the Riptide is not going to be available for the second time. But Frank, a little bit of back and forth as 13 minutes are left on the clock. Yeah, both these competitors have each other very well scouted. I mean, this reversal after reversal here, I guess that's just what happens whenever you've, you've been in the ring with somebody so many times. Uh, you become familiar, and you know what they say, familiarity breeds contempt, and we are seeing plenty of contempt coming through in this ring with these two competitors. Now, China was trying to get something huge off that top rope, trying to get that finisher, but Rhea able to get that reversal. Now she's going for a suplex of her own. Th these two are going back and forth. Look at the power on display Jeez. from Rhea Ripley. Yeah, it's and this, impressive. Yeah, it's so impressive. And just the slam right there, China barely has any bar help left. Red head health, red body health. This is not into the favor of Johnny B. And Johnny B has to find a way to just survive this action. But what a big drop oh. kick right there into the sun meter. And this is Miss Mug's opportunity. This is a huge opportunity. Will we see you at possibly the Riptide? No, it's going to wait. She doesn't have to wait, but she's going to let it now. Welcome to the rip tied into a pin count. Here we go. One, two. Oh, the close two count right there, Frank. See, if you'd listen to me, you'd already be up a point, and that could have been a two up when hey, you would have been putting your just just putting the finishing touches on this. But no, you gotta fight honorably, and that's why you're still tied here almost halfway through this Iron Woman match. We've gotten close to a fall, but nobody's quite gotten there yet. We'll see if Miss Muggs learned from Nope, didn't learn anything. All right. <laughs> yeah, well, well, you saw Miss Muggs. She saw the right opportunity. She was able to land her finisher, the rip tie, to possibly get a chance. Now, if China had resiliency, if it was used, that means the next time she gets a pin, it might be a good chance for her to get the victory and get the first fall. But right now, we're going to multiple lariats into a nice leaping drop kick oh. and that is going to be the advantage that she has as we're getting closer and closer to halfway mark as you said uh here frank this is gonna be very close but again china the knife wonder of the world even though she's low on health she's able to power through get a signature and a finisher yep i mean she knows this is a fight and she is not stopping for any moment uh whatsoever a huge military press right there just pressing rhea ripley oh, like God. it's nothing Ugh disgusting it's it just like the unlimited power that china has is incredible and now getting close to a sun meter for rhea ripley and it happens and now we have a two sword finisher and now here we go it's china's turn johnny b to get the first fall as we see here welcome to the pedigree pedigree lands pin right here referee has one, a count one two. two three the first fall goes to johnny b Yep, and hey, at this point, I'm rooting for Johnny B because Ms. Muggs had the opportunity, didn't take it. We're going to see if Johnny B is able to strike while the iron is hot. Maybe, uh, you know, get some inventive strategy going on with the rules here to, to keep that iron grip on the lead. We'll see what happens. Rhea's looking to get her up so she can put her back down. What she got in store here? Is she going to go for another Riptide, Kingsley? Well, we'll have to find out. I mean, that's been her best move so far. But, oh, low blow. <laughs> that's why cheaters never win. You can't go for a low blow because it get, easily gets countered. But a low blow, trying to get a little bit desperate as we're under 10 minutes right here. Oh, a good dodge from Miss Muggs. But I, I'm surprised Miss Muggs was doing so well. But I feel like that pin fall kind of affected her mentality. I love the gumption. She realized, you know what? I'm down and we're done with this playing fair and playing nice nonsense. Pro tip for you, Miss Muggs, next time you want to go for that, which I fully recommend and, oh, okay. and can't commend you enough, take the turnbuckle off. It'll give the referee something else to focus on. Then you can do what you need to do. But as we see here, uh, China's able oh. to run, going for another pedigree. She's looking to take a oh. huge advantage here. And honestly, now Miss Muggs has won me back to her side. I don't want her, I don't want her to give up this pinfall because now it seems Two. like she's going to do what needs to be done, including using that resiliency to break out of that second pinfall to keep this thing at 1-0 China. 
Yeah, she kind of knew that uh, Rhea Ripley, Miss Bucks, could not go down to the zip, especially with 8.30 left on the clock. You need to make sure it's only like a one-point deficit. Oh, but a nice uh -oh. counter into a second rip tied, and that is huge. It. And no, no, not going for the pin automatically. What right. What's she think? Oh, no, right. smart ring awareness, trying to get away from the ropes, and that will be no, a close two count again. Two rip tides, two Feld pinfalls right there, Frank. Yeah, I'm curious to see how much longer China's gonna be able to keep this up, right? Because the resiliency just got used, so you think the next one's gonna spell bad news. She's got an injury to the head, an injury to the torso, and Ripley is not stopping for anything. She has no reason to, and continuing to put the gas on, getting close to another stun meter with the finish restored. Things are starting to look a little grim for China. We'll see if uh, if she's able to to turn this thing around here, Kingsley. Yeah, and that's the main thing. We saw that China has been in this situation from the get-go. But the fact that she was able to get that first pinfall changed everything. And oh, there's the low blow. Unbelievable. And she's going to go for a pin after that. There we go. Oh, uh -oh. quick one count. There we go. That might have been resiliency there. So the finisher will not be on deck for China unless she gets another uh, uh -oh. But this will be a reversal. The third one is the charm as we see a Riptide land. And again, trying to turn around the go for a pinfall. And here we go. Referee's going to count it. One, two. We are all tied up here, Frank. No, we're not. No, we're not. The referee saw the low blow and gave China a point. You're right. Oh, my God. It was a disqualification because of the low blow. So it was now two to one. You're absolutely right, Frank. I tell you, every time you go for a low blow, it doesn't go into your favor. Even no. I was confused there. I told you she should have taken the turnbuckle off first so the referee wouldn't have seen it. Oh, but wait. Another red talk out of nowhere. But again, the ropes. Smart plan. I'm not going for the pinball attempt and dragging her away from the ropes. The smart ring awareness. But she's or is not it because she doesn't have the stamina to drag her? Yeah, oh, but smart, trying to go away from the ropes right there. Going for the two, three. Now, now it's actually up. officially tied up here. <laughs> Rhea Ripley, Miss Muggs, able to find the comeback, actually being down two zip, I think, from that whole situation. Now it's up to Johnny B. After losing that lead in a matter of two minutes, what can possibly Brr. happen in the next <laughs> six minutes? This is going to be huge. Who takes over the women's championship? Man, who knows? Because both of these women have had moments throughout this match, right? Where it seemed like they were just on top of everything and the opponent wasn't going to be able to do anything. And now that next riptide might put Rhea in the same position. To be honest, I don't know why she's just refusing to go for the pin off of the off the riptide. That's that's just that's neither here nor there. Uh, yeah, but, but, a good, but a good kick out right there. I, yes. I think it could have been because of the ropes. You know, the riptide is very close of where the arms are more spread out for the opponent getting pinned right there. So maybe uh, Miss Monks was trying to be careful of the ring rope, trying to bring more awareness inside because you can't get a pinfall outside the ring. It has to be all inside. And with the German suplex, keeping them more inside, that's going to pay dividends in the future. But right now, China has the signature. Getting close to a finisher right there, but what a big boot right there as we're approaching the five minute mark. China smartly going outside of the ring. Hey, real quick sidebar we're, we're approaching the five minute mark. How would you feel about an Iron Man Falls Count Anywhere match? Think oh on my. that. Get back to can, me. All can, right, can, as, this can action, you imagine? <laughs> as this action is outside of the ring, Ripley with a huge drop kick just catches enough of China. Um, and yeah, looking to just keep this offensive onslaught going on on the outside of the ring. All I'm saying is, I see a nice announce table right there. Uh -oh. It's like okay. it could be broken. At, at least it's on the other side, so we're not going to get any shrapnel as you want it to. Oh, I'll push you over there. Don't worry. Well, you're not going to push me anywhere. You you better get away from me. But honestly, we're seeing Johnny B trying to find his way. And oh, wait, from the outside of the ring, going for a pedigree. Oh. That's huge. Now, can she drag? Miss Muggs inside the ring. That would be huge. Travel probably gonna go for a pin. As we see a seven account, bring her inside. Not going for a count out. And here we go. Pinfall attempt right here. Four minutes on the doubt. Two, three. Miss uh Johnny B gets the third pinfall. And now it's three to two right here, Frank. Yeah, that's huge. I'm gonna be honest. I was ready to talk bad about Johnny B if you just if if Ripley would have kicked out of that. Yeah, but she didn't. So here we are. Now China's up 3-2. Um, you had an excellent opportunity to just get a free count out point. I'm just saying. But anyway, people just seem, I don't know. They they, they seem hesitant to, to 
to get an easy night at the office. What's that all about? <laughs> I mean, we you, we already filled your quota of low blows, I feel like. It already cost someone a fall, and that's why Johnny B is up 3-2 to two with that low blow being landed on him. But right now, we're seeing Rhea Ripley, Miss Mugs, trying to take more action out of China, trying to bring her endurance down. And right now, going for a ripcord. Drop him with a nice signature on the deck. But again, trying to get closer and closer to a finisher being soared. Can she get a big boot? That will land. Oh, but a nice counter from China. Had to use everything and lost a little bit of her blue bar and yellow bar to get that counter in. But it, it's getting so close for Miss Muggs. She needs an opportunity as another Ooh. German suplex lands as we're getting closer and closer with 2.50 seconds left on the clock. Yeah, uh, man, there's 2.45 left. It is winning time, Kingsley. How bad does Rhea Ripley want this women's championship? We're going to find out in the next 240. But yeah, I was just about to say, if she's smart, she's going to go for a riptide right here. Rip and she gets it. Number six, I think. And that leaves away the sun meter. But the pinfall doesn't matter. As we see, can Rhea Ripley tie it? Yes, she will. And it's hmm. three to three with 221 left on the clock. Miss Muggs and Johnny B are fighting for the women's championship. And they're getting closer and closer to the finale. This might as well be a game seven here, uh, Frank. It is getting closer and closer to the nail. Not only is it game seven, we're tied in the fourth quarter with two minutes left to go. I mean, as I said two seconds ago, mm. this is winning time. How bad do you want it? Don't tell me. Go show me. And now we see Rhea Ripley trying to get China up to see if she can get this finish, to see if she can put the final stamp on this rivalry, on this, this huge match, this Iron Woman match where both these women, both these competitors are giving it everything that they have and then some. I'm thrilled to see how this thing is going to finish. Yeah, we have 140 left. We see that Rhea Ripley has the signature. Good dodge from uh, Miss Monk. But not even again. Oh, what a roll up. Roll up a little bit of a schoolboy. But instantly to get out. Good reaction time from Miss Monk. But Johnny B feeling the sense of urgency. Trying to get this pinfall victory. No, they need to get the bar up to a signature. But taking her outside the ring. Not really the best strategy to get a pinfall uh, as soon as possible. We're taking it down. We're getting closer and closer as we're in 110. One minute mark is going to be very close. They, they couldn't possibly tie this because they, they need to go for a pin next one. Listen, you keep talking about pins. All right? Fight here until the referee gets Listen. to eight and then just leave. You're talking about you, this, you don't have time to go for a quick pin. No, you don't. So don't. It only takes 10 seconds to get a count out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Get back I, in and you win. I think that's what Johnny B is trying to do. Warrior at the sixth down from the referee. And you see Johnny B, he's trying to implement the strategy. The ego, the championship, getting closer and closer to the grips of Johnny B. The seven count. And oh my God, with 30 <laughs> this is going to be big. No, we can't have huge, that. Like, huge reversal from Ripley. Left. Yeah, huge reversal. But again, the, the, the time he is so sure is back in there. There's 20 seconds left, and they're at nine. Get in the oh, ring. No way. There's no possible way. We're getting this thing. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Get this dub. Get this dub. There's no way. Oh, my God. It's tied up. Get this dub. Get this dub. There's no way. Oh, my God. It's tied up. We haven't been able to get into the ring in time. It was just a split second away. And when that is it. Break. That's a draw. Oh, my God. It still ends in a draw. When did when did the uh, referee's count break? Because that should have been a count out. I thought. I, I didn't. It, it, no, here's the thing. It was a count out, but when the 10 count happened, both competitors were outside the ring. So it counted for both of them. So it was a double count out. I, I, <laughs> that's how the No one gets the title. That's how. See, this is why cheaters never win here, Frank. That's why you leave it as a job because both of them try to take the shortcut here, Frank. No, they're at a draw because neither one knows how to cheat. It's simple. It's easy. You just make the ref look that way and you do something this way. It's 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 elementary. Does nobody have anybody's music queued up that you can hit and, and they turn around? Does nobody have wh where's the Eddie Guerrero uh sense of, of, of victory? Hand the chair to your opponent and fall down. There's gotta be something you can do to get this title and get out of here, but they didn't. I think that that, that that we need to have some kind of, I don't know. Listen, no, do if they're, they're going to cheat, there's no way we could possibly have, like, any kind of tiebreaker. I know you guys don't want to see, like, a win like that, right? Frank, come on. You got to, honestly, it's for the championship. We can't just have it just end or, like, no, no shot. even when they're trying to go for a low blow here. 
No, no, no shot. I think there should be something. Maybe uh, you know, bring him back out and you don't want cheating. Maybe we can get like a no DQ Whatever. or something. Oh, oh, wait, hold, hold on, Frank. Uh, we're getting all oh, okay. We're oh, all right. Yep. Yeah, I'm. It's, it's very loud. Don't in my have to yell, God. So, Boiler is scrambling around and he is pissed off. He's throwing chairs and tables everywhere. Okay. Okay. Right. 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 So update. Okay. okay. We're going to do it. And we're going to restart the match. It's going to be a tiebreaker. Last fall win. So whoever gets the next fall wins the championship. So I think they're resetting the match as we speak. So I think we're going live to the arena right now. Yeah. We're gonna, Good. We're going to try to restart it. So it seems Absolutely. like everyone's trying to get everyone's scrambling. We're we're still on the precipice. Ask them, I, I ask think them if we can get like some no DQ so we can get some tables. No DQ. Some Come other on. Things. It, it's for the championship. We have to have yeah. DQ. It's in no, the bowl for the Iron Women match. I mean, you we had DQs. We had count-outs. This is the only way to sell it. So I feel right, so like... How, do, how, how would you feel about an Iron Man falls count anywhere no DQ match? Just just thoughts. Uh, yeah, well, listen, it. we, we have more events in July to make that happen. But I feel like down. we're ready to get things going, possibly. Well, yeah, we're, we're getting word that we're ready to go. They're back oh, in the man. ring. They're getting close. And I think we're going to get this started as soon as possible. So again, it's going to be same characters, Miss Mutz for uh, uh, Rhea Ridley for Miss Mutz. Johnny B is using China as we're getting a match going. So let, let's get it on. And we're, and we're already in it too. It seems like, yeah, they're just starting it. And you know. Yeah, I mean, what's the point in, in a warm-up? They've already fought for 20 minutes. They know what it is. Yeah, and already you can see they're at lower health. That that was the stipulation that Boiler implemented in this contest. So again, by Boiler's command, we have a tiebreaker for the women's championship. It was tied at four to four, and now we're gonna sell it finally in this contest. And right now, Power Slam, the same strategy that Johnny B tried to use with a Power Slam, he's gonna try to use it right now in this contest. Yeah, uh, and you got to wonder just how much either of these competitors has left. I mean, they both just left it all on the line. They've got to be spent, but you don't have time to think about that, man. You, you just got to get back in there and get to work, which is, you know. Yeah, and, and, the most important thing, yeah, and the most important thing is that it's not an Iron Man match anymore. It's just a one-fall matchup. So any low blows, any countouts, that is it. Whoever wins that, you're the champion. So with this situation, as you see Rhea Ripley with a nice Northern Lights get in China's son, this is big because not close to a signature. You need a signature on a finisher per ESFLW rule to go for a pinfall account. So it's a race to whoever could get that first signature here, Frank, as we go to near the high rent district. Yeah, and it's a race that uh, is very even, very close right now. Ripley seems to have a very slight advantage. This suplex might be enough to give her uh, that signature meter, which, as you just alluded to, is so important because you have to have a signature or a finisher uh, performed to go for a pinfall. And I know that neither one of these competitors wants to stick around any longer than they have to, right? Like, <laughs> just yeah, hit the pay window and go. Yeah, you saw that uh, Johnny B, he was counting the minutes out from that 10 count being raised, but it was outside the ring. That's why we're in this tiebreaker situation because it was four to four. But now we see Miss Muggs taking advantage, going for the Lariats, going for a ripcord, her favorite move into a drop kick. And that's big because now the signature is ready to go, but she needs to find an opportunity. China has red bar health, which means she can't get up as soon as possible. But again, the counters, the slams, work into her favor as a nice slam. And now we're getting closer and closer for a signature for Johnny B using China. China, China raising her opponent up, throws her into the corner. This could be a bit closer. Oh, the Irish was too big. And now that was a huge maneuver right there, Frank. Yeah, great dodge, but a, a better counter with the jawbreaker by China. She's still in this. There is no, there, there's no separation between these two, particularly at this point in the match after they've been going for so long. I mean, the fact that either one is able to to move at this point is is nothing short of miraculous the fact they're in here beating the hell out of each other says a ton about their toughness and their power speaking of power the power yeah, bomb by we, china yeah and i think that was a signature from china as mm -hmm. we saw a power bomb being landed but now we see oh wait china uh -oh. Able to answer back was it reverse pedigree lands that could be it but the it ring is a rope under oh no it's not two oh but only a two count i thought the feet was next to the ropes right there but I it mean, wasn't there if, yeah if we need to get this referee some glasses let's be honest <laughs> if the kick out moves the bottom rope your foot was under the ropes i'm just saying 
Hey, with everything that's gone like crazy in this whole contest, in this Iron Woman matchup, the fact that we almost could have had a controversial pin doesn't surprise me. But right here, we see back and forth. The commercials are coming in through with each oncoming strike. We see Rhea Ripley, Miss Mugs, fighting. Trying to find her way back into this contest. Being so close to lose the precious thing that she wanted for the longest time. Miss Muggs has the finisher. Not going to use it just yet. Going to throw her into the corner. A nice Irish whip. But Frank, you have to think with the sword finisher for Miss Muggs. This has to be a long time coming where she's going to use that Riptide. Yeah, I mean, yep, there it is. That's what I was about to say. You see, she's trying to get that stun meter mm -hmm. full. And now we might just be uh, putting the bow on this one. It might be the finishing touches. She's going oh. for that fig, uh, that sig signature. I cannot talk. Going for yeah. the signature off the electric chair face buster. Is she going to go for the riptide or should she just go straight into the pin? Straight oh, into no, the pin. She's going straight One. for the pin. She wants to call for the pain window, but not able to get it. But again, China, even though it's a tiebreaker, she's still so durable. We've seen this for the longest time for the last 20 minutes. And now for these ongoing minutes, you need to do a lot to bring her down. But with a nice counter like that, oh, oh but a counter like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going back and forth. But right here, we see that China doesn't have a sixer nor finisher. So she's going to have to do a lot more. And with mistakes like that, you need to capitalize on every single maneuver. Because you see, Rhea Ripley has two sword finishers. And she's able to get it. That has to be it. Rip Tide. Will this be for the title? No, she has to go for the pin. She's going for the pin now. But here we go. Win. No. Oh, resiliency. Again, it's resource. So resiliency is back. For both of these competitors. Yeah, and that's just an added dimension. You thought you'd already done enough, but then you got to do even more. And that's got to weigh on the mental, of course, because, I mean, after 20 minutes of war, I'm, I'm not trying to go back. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, when you have a Warriors fight, you stick in that fight until the last one is standing. And right now, China has a signature with a nice forearm to land. But it is a recovery. It would take away some of the bar for Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley, super Ooh. kick, landing. Will this be an opportunity for a finisher? No, doesn't get it. It's a recovery. It's just back and forth. The action is going crazy. Ooh. And we have another German suplex. The stun meter is so close, but smart from Johnny B. Able to get outside of the ring right there, Frank. Yeah, uh, Ripley was looking for a huge leg drop there, but came up empty. Uh, now she's just taking a moment to get the adulation of the crowd on her side, right? You know, you get that bonus from from the WWE Universe coursing through your veins. So we're going to see if she's able to, to put that to good use and see if she can get this finisher. Because as we've mentioned, she's got one stored. China does not. But. Yeah, but a nice hurricanrana into some <laughs> ground and pound right there will change everything. And now China, China has a sword finisher. So right now, center of the ring, who is going to take advantage? Who is going to get that last pinfall to be the new women's champion? And as we see, another Irish rip. Again, with, even with the turnbuckle cover still on, it still provides a lot of damage and with more forearms and forearms landing. But with this, what a nice uh -oh. counter. Able to get the get up like you see in Street Fighter. Oh, pedigree lands. Johnny B is closer to the top. Wait, whoa, whoa, Not what is this? Yet. Not to give me some more. <laughs> Salt to injury with a power bomb landing. The signature lands. No champ. Will we say no? A kick out from not even a one. Four, one. How, Sway? Oh, but the, oh, this might be the stamp. This might be the ending. Another pedigree landing. Pinfall. Center of the. No, another kick out. Wow. Oh. Pedigree, power bomb, back to back, pedigree. Not even a two count. Even uh, China goes for the most devastating move in all sports entertainment, the surprise roll up. Not even a one count. What not is it going to take to keep Ripley down? What is it going to take to get that women's title uh, out of out of escrow? Like who's who's willing to go out there and do everything, man? Because China seems like she has, and it just doesn't matter at this point. Rhea Ripley is just able to keep walking through all of this. Even on red head and body health, she doesn't care. She wants yeah. this title, and you can see just how much. Yeah, it is off of this riptide. Anarchy, and now we're going for another riptide. This is what Rhea Ripley wanted. Rhea Ripley won the opportunity to win the title. Can she find? No! I, it's the case. I, I don't know what's going to take. It's been pure chaos, pure anarchy 
for this championship matchup right here. Our first of two. I, I don't, I honestly don't know what's going to happen here, Frank. We saw super kicks. We saw pedigrees, power bumps, rip ties. Both of these fighters have been kicking out every oh single time. What is it going to take? I think it's going to take a little of the Arn Anderson special. Somebody's got to pull out the Glock here soon. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Okay. So pull out the Glock. But I'll put up, instead of pulling out the Glock, we're going to see another Riptide landing, connecting. Again, smart to not go for the pin right there because it would have been near on the ropes. But again, stun meter. For China, mm -hmm. Johnny B seeing his title hopes go out the window as we see another face buster onto the chrome of the dome. Uh, but it is a recovery. It's it's a no, <laughs> I, I, I have no Incredible. words. Incredible. Incredible. I mean, what? What? <laughs> I, I'm so speechless that we're seeing the schoolboy. I'm not even sure they're gonna get this pin again. A one count right there. But this is how this match has been going so far. We thought that could be the end. Another finisher could be the end. But the fact that they're still going after it with a military press, with all the endurance, all the strength from these two ladies, Miss Mons and Johnny B are put on an Iron Woman classic right here. And we see China. Getting closer and closer to the finisher. Oh, a reverse Irish rip into a nice hip toss right there. But again, Rhea Ripley, Miss Mugs, doing the smart thing, going outside the ring. Salt that China did it once before. But now, will we see another replay of the count out action? Uh, Frank, I know you've been a huge supporter of this maneuver, but there's no way he could stay out of the ring for a 10 count. No, and now I'm not in support of it because in the Iron Man match, it gets you a point, gets you closer to winning that title. This is just a title match now. It's not going to change hands on count out or DQ. Oh, my God. Who's the champion? Get a chair now. Go get, <laughs> chair. get out of here with your belt. What are you doing? Why are you still fighting? No, you have to keep fighting. It's the will. Fight. It's the strength. It's the fighting spirit of the ESFLW. This is what it's all about. Who it's stupidity. Beat the, it is not stupidity. It is honor and it is respect. That's why there's a ring of honor where they shake hands. This is about who can beat the other and the best way possible and you see a leg drop from Rhea Ripley Miss Muggs doing her best trying to damage her opponent and oh as we see here a can of a time trying to get that buff because you know she has a little bit of a debuff on her person because both of these characters are severely injured barely any health as both characters have a sore finisher but now inside the ring it's only who makes the first mistake who makes the last mistake who is going to get that last finisher to get the pinfall oh try to get a close one nice close line for Johnny B. Johnny B has the advantage, but again, back and forth. Counter, dodges, super kick, misses, DDT planted. That was a huge reversal there to, to reverse the riptide, specifically the kick that leads into it. Because now, I mean, this is China's world that we're living in. She's Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's the world. It became another world. We're into the multiple dimensions. We're in the multiverse of just striking and punching. It seems like these both are so indestructible when it comes to the maneuvers but right here we see a nice forearm elbow from china china has an opportunity she needs to go for a pedigree she will the sun meter is connecting landing johnny b this has to be it will we see a new chip one two three johnny b is your new women's champion Oh, my goodness. I want to loop back to something you said a minute ago. You were talking about Ring of Honor and they shake hands after they're done and all that. Listen, let's just let's put all the pretext aside, okay? What we just witnessed was 20-plus, I don't know how long the second match went, so 20-plus minutes of war. And what is the old adage? All is fair in love and war. Those two mm. didn't look like they loved each other too much to me. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, you should have just hit her over the head with a chair and got your title 20 minutes ago but i, we're past I can that. almost guarantee you never read a single page of that whole book of all fair and love and war I'm, I'm just gonna put it out there so all these quotes that you're no. coming from it had to end with a pinfall it had to end with both guys 
putting all, everything on the line and trying to see who's the best. That is the main essence of the ESFLW. So yeah, you can have your chair shots, you can have your low blows, you can have your count outs, but there was only one way that this whole thing was going to get settled, and it was by a pinfall right here, Frank. And we got that, and we got our new women's championship. And that's the only big thing. But speaking of big things, we still have two more matches to go. But speaking of, we still have a whole thing planned for the summer. Because not only as this is a huge wrestling weekend for all us wrestling heads, it's a big event for ESFL. Because ESFL is coming back with a little bit of a reunion from Las Vegas. It's going to be June 4th, the ESFL reunion, where you're going to see all your favorite commentators and all your favorite matchups coming up in, as soon as like in, in, in a week or so. Frank, How excited are you for the ESFL reunion? I mean, it'll be all right. No, I'm fired up, of course. Like, I mean, all the big names from the ESFL Live. Uh, all the big names from ESFL Live getting together to, to just go back at it. Can't wait to see that. We're also getting things started with uh, Undisputed the week after. So there's a lot of big things on the horizon for ESFL. Make sure that you are following us on Twitch, subscribed on YouTube, all of that good stuff so you don't miss a second of the action. Yeah, so you hear that, guys? So you can stop messaging us on the chat saying, oh, wrestling's happening? Where's Undisputed? You're going to get Undisputed next month, June 11. It's going to be so great. I can't wait to see what Bailey and everyone else has on for commentary and all the incredible matches, especially with the updates and everything that's been put into Undisputed. It's going to be such a banger of a season, and especially we're getting things started with the ESFL reunion. So you got that to come up in the big key of the summer in June. ESFL uh, reunion ESFL, Undisputed, they're both coming along your way. But before we get there, we still have some wrestling stuff to do as we're going into our co-main event of the evening. And this one is going to be a highly anticipated return for Hollywood Mud, a former contender taking his rifle space back into the place exercise against an undefeated fighter, Graphics, who was in the war in the final runback, who was in a war between Miss Muggs and everyone else. He is 4-0. He hasn't lost yet. And the fact that he's using HBK 97 going against Batista OA, this, uh, Frank, when you think about this matchup, about how high caliber these uh, competitors are, you have to think it's going to be nothing but a banger. Yes, absolutely. But, I mean... Well, never mind, never mind. I was about to get a little political, like Sean was known to do in 98. But that's neither here nor there. What we've got is these two phenomenal titans of this industry about to get in there and do battle uh, in a false count anywhere match, if I'm remembering correctly. Is that, mm -hmm. is that accurate? Okay, yeah, yeah. So anything goes here. They can end up fighting at the commentary booth next to us. They can end up in the, in the arena in the back. If one of these guys pins the other one in his locker in the locker room, hey. That's just where it ended up. Falls count anywhere means anywhere. And I can't wait to see what they've got in store for us. I want them to take full advantage of that match stipulation and uh, just go crazy, fellas. Yeah, absolutely. And as we are getting ready to see some action, we are ready with the loading screen right here. We are ready to get things going. And we're ready to go as we're already getting straight into it again. Shawn Michaels 98 is being used by Graphics, who is 4-0. Used Shawn Michaels in the last event of ESFLW, run it back, able to win against, uh, I think it was uh, Triple H from yes. all 2 That was a crazy matchup. But now Hollywood Mud making his debut, usually known for using the rock, went for a Batista pick, but with Graphics using HBK. You know, the sweet pin music is in this repertoire. The elbow drop, the sharpshooter, all these maneuvers, the technician of Shawn Michaels has to be a huge advantage for graphics. Absolutely. And just a quick shout out to whoever made these uh, Shawn Michaels calls. The one he used last time and this one, they're both fired, man. Let's just, mm -hmm. let's get that out there. Um, these, these content creators do fantastic work when it comes to the community creations. But that has nothing to do with what we've got going on here besides, you know, it's going to make it look prettier for us. I'm willing to see, uh, as we saw earlier in the Cody Rhodes-Brock Lesnar match, is HBK going to use that speed to his advantage, I can't mm -hmm. tell you how many times I've done that exact pose in my living room over my lifetime, Kingsley. It's probably oh, yeah. embarrassing. Are you, are you a true wrestling <laughs> fan if you don't do that pose or try to mimic all your favorite wrestlers' entrances? But exactly. again, Sean Michaels <laughs> has been called Mr. WrestleMania for a reason. He's become like the showstopper. There's a reason why people use Sean Michaels and go for a super kick to this day. 
in wrestling. It was all because of Shawn Michaels making it famous and the fact that he was able to use it in ESFLW running back for graphics. This means he is in for another opportunity to steal the show again. But again, you have a returning wrestler for the ESFLW in Hollywood Mud, and he's using the animal, the Mr. Guardians of the Galaxy, <laughs> so probably the best wrestler of the 2000s in Batista. Man, everything I just said about Shawn Michaels is it still reigns true, but it's going to be a difficult task to topple Batista, specifically O.A. Batista in his prime for the most part. I mean, this this was the guy, bro. Like, <laughs> whenever I was coming up watching wrestling, I always knew that when Batista showed up, somebody was getting handled, period, yeah. point blank. Uh I mean, talk about the matches that Batista has been in. You're talking about Batista versus John Cena. He won that. WrestleMania 21 against Triple H for the World Heavyweight title. He won that. Triple H versus Batista in a hell in a cell and Unforgiven. He won that. He's been in every single big match that you can name, and he has did there, done that, and now going into the ESFLW. We've seen him before, but in a big matchup against an undefeated fighter, this is possibly the biggest thing that we've seen so far to his ESFLW career to date and right now you say it's all about me it's all about the spotlight that's put upon him he's been in hollywood he's been in wrestling can he finally do it in the virtual ring in the esflw time will only tell but with graphics with hollywood mud both of them have not taken a loss this is an opportunity to see who is going to be taking the franchise uh platform of the PlayStation side for the ESPNW. I can't wait for this, Frank. No, this is absolutely a star-making match, or has the potential to be a star-making match, I should, should say. Both these guys undefeated, as you've mentioned. Uh, Hollywood Mud, former Royal Rumble winner. Graphics has been putting in the work uh, with a huge win over, over Triple H on Run It Back. I, man, I'm looking forward to seeing who emerges from this, because you would think, right? It's almost, I'm not going to say guaranteeing, but it puts them in a great position to be number one contender, does it not? Yeah, we'll have to see. I mean, a lot of things could be happening. Again, ESFLW events will come back in July as we're getting ready for Undisputed in the reunion. That's going to be taking over all of June. But again, this is where the matter is at hand. This is his taking part right now. Oh. As we see Hollywood Mud taking advantage of his ESFLW vet status going against graphics in the ps4 side and again this is where we need to see graphics use his speed use his technician he's gonna have the reversal advantage against hollywood mode using hbk and now he needs to fully capitalize to get the advantage yeah absolutely and it's looking like he's trying to do that now trying to get out on the front foot um batista got off to a hot start but michaels looks to be finding his his groove his his rhythm in this match couple of huge hammer throws into the the corners is he just gonna try and okay i thought he was gonna try and make his way around the ring now he's got batista busted open with that right hand there and uh we'll see how big of a factor that plays in this match going forward yeah you usually know hbk for his technical uh prowess in the ring but for his strikes Ooh. he's working so well that he busted open uh batista now this wow. is where Paul's Cow anywhere comes into play as outside the ring inside the ring all pinfall pitfalls are legal so this, this is in your wheelhouse frank we're going to see weapons we're going to see crazy stuff we might see someone from the from the crowd throw like a solo pop can at someone it's going to be absolutely chaotic and anarchy in this cold main event right here but right here we're seeing so many counters a nice ddt onto the temple of Shawn michaels graphic needs to find a way to answer back but so far so good for hollywood mud yeah, right now he has got his foot on the gas and he is looking to just press this advantage right now while he's got it. I love the, um, you know, the, the mentality of never stepping off of that gas. But hey, Shawn Michaels doing a great job getting the reversals in. Now it's his turn to get his his offense in. He loves those hammer throws into the corner and you're eventually going to see that starting to wear down on Batista. I'm curious to see if he's going to keep doing that. You know, I always call for it, but why not take the turnbuckle cover off? <laughs> You know, I hope we actually see a turbuckle cover on. I need to see your reaction to that. But so far, we're seeing not really a chance to take the turnbuckle off as more of a sun opportunity for HBK, but a good reversal from Hollywood Mud into a spread buster. Turner Bell is happening right here, but an instant kip up from Shawn Michaels. And now you see both guys saying, okay, you got the signature on me, but I'm not going to let you get the pin. But again, 
going outside the ring doesn't mean you're able to like escape from a pinfall from a finishing mm -hmm. maneuver. You need to find a way to use your whole area to find a safe space so you don't get hit with a finisher or a signature. But with Hollywood Mud able to get the advantage, it's only a matter of time before he hits the Batista bomb. You would think that. It looks like he's trying to figure out the best moment to do so. See if he can try and catch graphics slipping a little bit, maybe when he's not thinking about it. Right now, graphics seems to be alert to everything coming back his way. Man, all right, listen. Just just take the turnbuckle cover off. Kingsley, I feel like I am here for a very important reason today. And not only is it to watch great wrestling matches, I got to teach y'all how to cheat, man. Straight up. I got to teach y'all how to start taking every liberty with these rules. Okay, it's, Eddie Guerrero, but listen. It's a false count anywhere match, right? Like, uh, you know, no I, DQs, hope that, I hope it doesn't happen. It's no DQs. Weapons are legal. Anything is legal. Low blows are legal. But you well, know what? Because you wanted me getting hit with the announcer table earlier in this event. You know what? I hope no turnbuckle gets uncovered. I hope they're all safely placed and everything is just up in front and all dandy. Or as you see here, outside the ring, headlock into a punch. Shawn Michaels graphics has his sword finisher getting close to two and has his signature online. And we see Batista, red bar health, halfway through his finisher and signature is up to a baseball side, not really connecting. And now you see kind of the nerves are happening for Hollywood Mud and graphics, knowing that this is a big contest, the co-main event of ESFLW Anarchy, kind of missing with their strikes. But again, turnbuckle, getting slammed, but not uncovered yet, Frank. We're just going straight up with, a, with some strikes. It doesn't need to be uncovered as long as somebody gets busted open with like a trash can or something. I'll, I'll, oh. I'll trade the turnbuckle, but I need somebody to start pulling out the toys. Let's 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 let's, let's get crazy. It's anarchy. I'm trying to see y'all go nuts, right? Like go 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 get a baseball bat. Somebody break something on somebody. Yeah, okay. wrestling is awesome, and like you guys are having a great wrestling match. This is falls count anywhere. Go to war. <laughs> you know what? The only reason we're ever going to have baseball. Uh, Baseball bats is because if Sting like just falls from the Raptors and tries to enter the ring. But speaking of entering oh, the ring, we're tuning up the band as Shawn Michaels is gonna land a sweet chin music. No, gets reversed, trying to go for a nice Batista bump. But no, here we go, signature move for a submission, a sharpshooter. Now here's the case for this uh, submission. Oh, he needs to let go of that he can't really go for a pinball. He needs to. Submissions, normal submissions are not allowed in the ESFLW. If you have it for a signature or a finisher, you have to let go of it instantly and go for a pin right after to make it count. So already kind of bending the rules for graphics right there. Go for a sharpshooter. Well, there's just a lot going on. You see Shawn Michaels going for the sharpshooter. You know Bret Hart is somewhere shadow boxing, just off rip. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and yeah, like you had said, just uh, having to be aware of those submission rules. That that's an extra uh, element that he might not have, have have been ready for. So you saw he was able to break that. Now these two back in the middle of the ring, looking for that upper hand. I'm still looking for a chair or something of the sort. If if one of y'all could get a foreign object, I would just be over the moon. Yeah, an over the moon he would be. But again, we're seeing DDTs. You see Batista, the side of the head is all bloodied up from all the DDTs in the forums that we're seeing from HBK and trying to lift him up. Batista is too strong and too big to be lifted from Shawn Michaels. And right now we're seeing getting tossed into the uh, turnbuckle again into the corner. And we're just seeing the constant speed from HBK. Graphic is doing such a nice job as he has three sword finishers. And right now, Batista, Hollywood Mud is just thinking, contemplating, trying to disrupt the timing of graphics. Being I think he's trying to shake the cobwebs loose. Uh, and it worked for a second, but whenever you got Michaels coming off the ropes like like a bat out of hell. Oh, spear! Like, no sell oh. from Sean. He's going into business for himself, Kingsley. A oh, huge sweet, sweet chin spinners. music. Oh my God, and both guys were too exhausted that he couldn't go for a pin right there. But he could go a pin outside the ring, but he's not Or he could just it. kick him in the mouth again. Oh, wait, wait a minute. No, he's not. He's oh, going for a taste bomb. He's not strong enough to do that. He does it. <laughs> you couldn't lift him up regularly, but here he is pulling Batista bombs out of nowhere. We got to check Sean in the back. We got to drug test him after this. Yeah, and there we go. A turn of insult to injury from Hollywood Mud. He got hit with his own finisher move, not able to take uh, most of the events, but able to get the kick out. And now graphics is smelling more blood in the water. He was able to hit a sweet chain music. He was able to hit a Batista bomb using a move thief, but now it is up to graphics. What can he possibly do 
to get more of the advantage, but we see he's shaking the cobwebs again for Hollywood Mud. Maybe that ring rust that he's had, he's been off the game, off of the ESFLW spotlight for a little alone of three months. The other thing that has to play a factor in this whole contest here, uh, Frank. It might, but I mean, let's just, let's be honest with ourselves. I'm gonna be honest with you. I forgot where I was going with that. So just yeah, it was like, let's be honest, someone's getting their ass rolled right here and it's graphic, even though he has two finishers right here. But here we go, belly to belly, lands. He needs to do a lot more, trying to get that stun and that signature bar all the way up. And I think he's gonna get it from that sequence. And now it's up to Hollywood Mud. He has an opportunity. He has a chance to use all his weapons to attack his opponent. And we're now going to the high rim district. Could we possibly see a suplex? But no, the sun meter goes away. And now it's up to graphics. Graphics raking the eyes a little bit, going for headlock, just punching the face again. And now. Outside, the, oh no, into the turnbuckle. You have to think closer to three sword finishers is going to be the key for graphics. Yeah, you got to wonder if he's trying to, you know, build those finishers up so he can just <laughs> unleash all three of them at once. Mm. And he might be starting that onslaught here soon. Looks like he's trying to get as much damage as he can before going for the uh, the sweet chin music. Or he's just going to hang out for a second. You know, it's, it's hard oh, to read he, that guy. <laughs> he wants to put some steak on it. He got the super kick again, but. His stamina and his health was so low that he can't capitalize off of a pin. And you see right here, wake up taunts, working to graphics benefit, goes for a chop. And now when you think about going instantly for a finisher, this is what the timing has to be from the ESFLW. You know that it's very easy to counter the sweet chain music if you're not in the sun situation. So he's trying to disrupt the timing. He's trying to find a way to make sure he actually landed. But with a nice little Shane O'Mac, oh my, oh, here we go. Now we're going to the announcer table. Tries to go for oh a sweet chain music, not able to land, but throws him into our announcer table. You know, actually, I hope that water bottle hits oh, you. That was genius. Everything. But a sweet chain music lands right there, Frank. But now he's too tired to even get on, to, to go for the pin. Get on top of him, Sean, go win. Oh, he's going here, and there we go. False count anywhere. The pinfall. Oh, and a hits and kick out. Not even use a resiliency either. Yeah, I, I'm going to be honest. I've never seen somebody just, like, take a sweet chin music and then just not care like that. <laughs> uh, have you heard of a little company called AEW? Because I feel like they're heard of us all the time. But mm, as we see <laughs> here, as we see here, Shawn Michaels getting thrown into the turnbuckles, and now Batista has an opportunity. Signature, finisher, all on deck for Batista as he lands a spear. And Graphics could easily have his first loss in the competition. And here we go. Coming. You said you can do a Batista bomb. Here's the real Batista bomb. Pitfall, center of the ring. One. Oh, only a one count here, Frank. And keep in mind, Shawn Michaels does still have resiliency. So even if, mm. you know, even whenever it does look like it's going to get dicey, which, hell, it might again, yeah, I oh, think he'll be fine. Yeah, and another Batista bomb center of the ring again. This hat, no. Is he actually going to get the pitfall? No, a two count. Yeah. That might have been the resiliency that you were talking about there, Frank. He is off to his worry. last legs. Yeah, now he's got something to worry about, man, because... You've got a pissed off, angry Batista in front of you. He's seen his own blood. Nobody makes him bleed his own blood. And now he's giving you the thumbs down, man. If I'm Shawn Michaels, I'm looking for the, the nearest escape route, man. If I'm being honest. I'm trying to get the hell out of Dodge. Yeah, but that would be the case in a normal match. But false count anywhere, you can't leave. There has to be a pinfall anywhere in this whole entire world. And right now we're seeing a Dragon Tail Whip. From Shawn Michaels, graphics doing a nice job to answer the bell again. Will he possibly go for a sweet chin music? Doesn't trying to work his opponent a little bit more. Get that green bar low into oh. a vicious German suplex Beautiful using all German. his power. Yeah, you can see he put every ounce of himself into that German suplex, and it, it was it was gorgeous, beautifully executed. But a huge clothesline, <laughs> Batista put all of himself into that one. And there's a lot more Batista than there is of Shawn Michaels. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. We saw it. it took a lot to even use the Sweet Chain music and even the Batista bomb. But right now, we're going back and forth with Chops. Batista getting his strikes in like a prize fighter. As we see, Shawn Michaels, his son, on the ropes. He keeps on just slogging on the face, trying to bust him open. But with a signature and a finisher. Oh, here we go. The uh -oh. third Batista bomb. Bob in the center of the ring. Graphics could finally lose his contact. No, he kicks out. Whoa. Oh, Inslee going back for another pin. 
Hollywood mod can he return no another kick again. he's not even getting two counts I don't I'm I'm baffled <laughs> I'm speechless I'm gonna this... continue to talk because I'm so speechless no <laughs> I would do the same damn thing this is serious both guys put it on the show graphics turn off the pin gets countered again reversal into a Batista bomb gets countered Back and forth with these finishers. Not able to win. The counters have been so well for both of these competitors. Tosses them into the corner. Taps on the socket. Goes into another whip into the corner. And that's a stun. Shawn Michaels has a you finisher. Finish it, Shawn. He wants to finish it. Super kick. Landing. Tired is all hell. Dragging his body from up top for the pin. One, One two. two. Oh, resiliency lose. Wow, these two do not want this match to end. <laughs> I mean, they are really just uh, both these guys want to remain undefeated. Both these guys want to remain in the PS4 title picture, and they're giving us lots of reasons why they should be doing so with this match, Kingsley. I mean, these guys are going at it. Yeah, and finally, in the latter parts of this match, we finally see Shawn Michaels finally busted open from Hollywood Mud. Hollywood Mud has the advantage here. He has a finisher. He just needs to find the right timing. He finds it there. But Tesa Bomb, will that seal oh. the deal? Hollywood Mud, welcome back. One, yes. two, three. And that's how he gets it done, man. Hey, fantastic performance by both of those guys. I mean... Hollywood Mud, like you said, after all that time off, comes back with a fantastic showing, but Graphics has nothing to hang his head over because he was in there fighting, hanging tough the entire time against an uncaged animal in Batista, and he fought as long as he could, as hard as he could, but at the end of the day, I mean, Batista's Batista, bro. <laughs> yeah, let's just say that. Batista's Batista, but for both of these comparisons, for Graphics and Hollywood Mud, we, what we saw, Sweet Chin Music, we saw Batista bombs. We saw elbow drops. We saw DDTs. We saw both comparisons get busted open. And the fact that it was kick out, kick out, kick out, kick out. And it was only till the fourth Batista bomb that we actually got a pinfall that worked. I mean, kudos for, I think there was like no losers in that whole contest. And as you said, Hollywood Mud returned from a long uh, three month layoff from ESFLW competition. And the fact that he took down an undefeated fighter, 4-0 graphics, now 4-1, that possibly puts him in the title picture for the ongoing future ESFLW events. It's only going to mm -hmm. get bigger and better. So the PS4 side has been absolutely shook enough from that contest. Yes, I... Everything you just said is true. I have one amendment to make. You said there were no losers in that match. There was one. He was oh, wearing right. glasses okay. at the commentary desk. But other than that, <laughs> everybody's a winner here. Fantastic match by both of those guys. Can't wait to see what they've got going forward. Absolutely. And again, guys, you have been watching ESFLW Anarchy. We have one match left. But before we get into that match, let's remind you. That next month is a big one for the ESFL. ESFLW, uh, ESFL, excuse me, reunion is coming back June 4th for their amazing matches. All the guys that you love from the UFC are going to be back. Remember from Las Vegas that you can see on our library on YouTube? They're going to be all back. They're going to show you all these amazing matches. I'm going to be there. Frank is going to be there. It's going to be so exciting to reunite with everyone and just get back into some UFC goodness. And then after that week, we have ESFL. Undisputed, the new season from ESFL, where we're going to see everyone pawn the boxing gloves and du duke it out from the best of the best. And it's going to be so excellent and amazing. So, again, we're back with a new season with Undisputed, and we're back with a massive reunion. And then we'll be back with an ESFLW later on in the summer. This won't be the last that you see of us. We will bring you more wrestling content, especially in this later in the summer and in the fall. So, a lot of great stuff coming along the way but frank we got one match left are you ready to see some crazy title matches absolutely especially if i get to get out of here with you afterwards i mean yeah no these title right. matches are going to be fantastic 
I got to throw some shade, man. It's just who I am. It's what I do. Cool, cool, cool. Say this is the last goddamn show you're ever going to do. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) That's fine. Listen, if you want to see me in Undisputed, we can handle that on the 11th, sir. We can can do this. New season in two weeks. If you want to duke it out, I'm pointing the formal challenge. I'm kind of sick of Undisputed. Let's go. We can absolutely duke it out in Undisputed. I'll hold you to that. This is Everyone clip this out. It'll all be like... Yeah, that's what you said you're going to get, okay? But anyway, speaking of points, we're going to leave, leave it to the professionals in the WWE 2K23 scene in the Xbox side because we have an Extreme Rules 2 out of 3 falls title match for the Ooh. Xbox Series title. It's going to be the undefeated champion, Jinja, 6-0, going against DB Cryptomania, who is 2-0. As we see, both fighters are in the fire selection screen. As we take a look and we see Jinja, Going for a Finn Balor choice to defend his title. How interested are you in this pickup? Uh, I'm very interested, man. I've I've been a fan of Finn Balor for a long time. But man, on the other side of things, you see it, yo. I love Finn Balor, man. But Daring General, he's different, bro. Straight up, I got Gunther in this match. I love the guy. I mean, I from the first time I saw him see hit my TV screen about this time last year, at Kingsley. I said, that guy looks like a Captain America villain. <laughs> and then he won the Intercontinental <laughs> Championship and put that back on the map. So I'm like, hey, this guy's fantastic. The banger he had with, with Sheamus at Clash of the Castle to then turn around and follow that up with the WrestleMania performance against Drew and Sheamus. Oh, my goodness. I can't say enough good things about Gunther. Uh, and over an hour in the Royal Rumble, this guy's the truth, man. I wouldn't be mad at all to see him main eventing WrestleMania 40. That's... Uh, I could talk about Gunther all day, so I'm going to stop right there. Finn Balor on the way to, to the ring, also a fantastic competitor in every right. Every time I see Finn compete, I'm like, how is this guy 40 plus? It just doesn't make any sense. These guys are at the top of their game. Can't wait to see what they've got for us in the virtual ring here. Yeah, and what you talk about Gunther, he has a lot of amazing accomplishments in the wrestling ring, but let's not forget about Finn Balor, the first ever WWE Universal Champion. NXT champion, uh, United States champion, uh, Intercontinental champion, part of the Judgment Day has used the demon in a Hell in a Cell match against Edge in a ladder match against Kevin Owens in NXT TakeOver. This guy is big time as, as much as Gunther. Gunther is only doing a short amount of time, but when you think about Finn Balor going back to his previous days outside of uh, WWE, this is the reason why this guy is a rock and roller shooter. This guy has known to make clubs and make sure he rings a bunch of bullets onto his opponents and get the victory. So all the things that you say about the Gunther, the ring general, a part of Imperium, there's a demon in the lurks and he's ready to reclaim his championship, reclaim his status as Jinja is trying to stay undefeated and go 7-0 and here, Frank. Listen, I love Finn as much as the next guy, but that demon seems to have been neutered quite a bit here in recent times. 14 staples, and he's still alive. Let's be honest here. Listen, that's awesome. That's fantastic. Did he win the match? Hey, okay. All right. Did he win the match? He won it in soul. He won it in his heart. He survived. Did he win his his universal challenge against Roman Reigns when he was the demon? That was the last time he got it out. Did he win that one? That was a faulty turnbuckle that everybody knows. Did he win, though? No, he didn't win. Did he win, though? Okay. And when's the last time you saw Gunter lo- lose? Go ahead. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Ela Dragunov, uh, NXT 36. Boom. Got you. Ha <laughs> ha. Was, that was two years ago. But hey, semantics, right. okay? Your Honor, the prosecution rests. Listen, we, you know, you said everything right about Gunther. He I love the guy. <laughs> He's been a staple of the ESFLW. We saw graphics use him so many times against RN for Life, and it has been putting a beatdown on so many comparisons. The chops, just menacing, vicious, his grappling power. But the scariest thing about him is his agility, his speed. The fact that he can go up to the top row and slam on someone or do a powerbomb is absolutely insane. And the fact that he can do missile drop kicks on anybody and make them like just fly out of the screen is absolutely insane. So take nothing off 
off of Gunther, except that co. But Finn <laughs> Balor with Coupe de Gras is going to be a huge challenge for Cryptomania because Cryptomania, he's 2 0. He hasn't faced a lot of competitors like Ginger. He hasn't faced an Elimination Chamber or a Royal Rumble match. This is his opportunity to, re to gain the title in this Extreme Rules two out of three false match. This is your main event of ESFLW Anarchy. Ginger, you said Finn Balor, Gunther is you getting used by Cryptomania. Let's get this going here, Frank. Yeah, Crypto starting things off strong. I mean, you're the ring general. It's hard not to start strong. But Finn able to get a good reversal there. I, I anticipate this match going one of two ways, man. Either Finn's going to be able to get that speed going and, and just, you know, be too fast for Gunther to hang on to, or Gunther just exhibits that power and throws this man from one end of the ring to the other. We're just going to have to see what we get. I mean, it might be competitive and back and forth and all that stuff. Based on the other matches, I doubt that's going to happen, right? That hasn't happened at all today. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll have to see. Again, this is two out three falls, so not like an Iron Man match where you have you need to get the most pins it's all a best out of three you need to find a way to get two pinfalls and then you're able to get things going but right here we see Gunther just slamming finn balor down as we're we're seeing a clear perfect what you were seeing in the fine games community a clear seven letter golden letter perfect as we didn't see gunther take any damage but right now we're seeing the champion Find his way back in against gunther but with a drop kick landing right here the advantage has to be on the side of ginger yeah, at the moment anyway, because that huge reversal from Gunther is just, I mean, ah! mm. you saw I instinctively got quiet because I was waiting to hear the slap because yeah. that's just, uh, I love watching Gunther's matches, man. Like, dude is insane. He's he's a beast, and I would pay an exorbitant amount of money to watch this match in real life. Yeah, I mean, how much money? Because right now you're seeing a huge at least five dollars. You're here. You're seeing a huge price by live here on Twitch and on YouTube on ESFL Gaming. And so far, we're seeing a candlestick being implemented. The weapons are coming high heavy. But when your own body is a weapon, you don't really need to use much. As we're seeing counters and a candlestick to the midsection of Gunther. As we're seeing combinations coming out. And now, oh my God, just trying to use like a little bit of a pull shot to the midsection of Gunther. And Ginger is kind of feeling some type of way, just stomping on the head of Gunther. Yeah, he's starting to find his momentum now. Ah, uh, but he went to that well one too many times, and the uh, Derin General is is too sharp for that. You can't just keep going for the same attacks against this man. But Finn doing a good job switching things up. They are dancing in this in this corner. Neither neither guy wants to be there because they know how dangerous that is. Finn's got that shotgun drop kick from the corner, and I want to say Gunther's can be used in the corner. I could be wrong on that one, but it, it, it can be used in the corner, but most likely I think he does it with a running uh, strike whenever mm -hmm. he has the signature. I'm not uh, fully sure, so someone can correct me, but right now we're seeing Jija just taunting, trying to get the buff ready for his guy, but Ooh. now he gets hit with a nice clothesline, and this is what Gunther's all about. Even though he yeah. has the chops, even though he has the grappling, the fact that he can use his, uh, his legs to just stomp on an opponent, <laughs> go for vicious slaps like that. The chop can ring around everywhere in the world and you'll still hear it into the crowd. And just toss it as a fun. This is what Finn Beller needs to watch out for. Needs yeah. to use the speed in the agility to get outside the ring just like that and just find the time and space to just work things out. Because Gunther, even though he's getting hit a bunch, you can see that green bar is already just progressing forward to being full again. Yeah, exactly. He's getting hit a bunch, but I mean, mm. you can punch oh, a tank how many times? <laughs> Yeah, if we just saw a signature there from Finn Balor. Sorry to cut you off, but no, that's fine. a huge maneuver because Gunther just lost all his progression to his green bar help, and now he's in the red. It's so far, Jinja has a signature stored, but Gunther coming up with a oh, Death Valley driver. Oh, that was disgusting. He just straight from the catch. That was nasty. I like that. I like that quite a bit. Yeah, and so far, it, it's up to uh cryptomania using gunther he is the challenger he's not been in this situation before in this title match he has been in high contested matches like the final run back and mainly mid card matchups but the fact that he is in the main event against a proven champion like ginger with a possible pin like that he needs to be his eyes on the swivel he needs to have a 360 degree vision because he needs to use everything in his power to destroy jinja to claim the title away from him yeah beautiful double underhook suplex right there we're gonna see if he can capitalize looks like he's just trying to get a little bit more damage off before he um 
Goes into those power bombs. Yeah, and there it is. Target the first one bomb. landing. And again, no rope breaks. It's extreme rules. Rope okay. breaks do not count. Yeah, I saw I saw that little movie you were doing. I was like, what the hell was that? It's extreme rules. Everything is allowed. Like, especially with that back chop. And with a kick like that. This massively Finn Balor. And look at his bar health. Barely a morsel left onto the body health and the head health. That's not going to help. Balor. That's not going to help at all, man. It just seems like everything Gunther does hurts. And hurts a lot. <laughs> like, I mean, obviously everything looks like it hurts, but it... Jesus, I'm not trying to take those at all from anybody, ever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so you want to be a wrestler? This is how no. you do it. You have to <laughs> find a way to outbeat your opponent and just endure so much amount of pain from your opponent. But right now, we see in Cryptomania, outside the ring, trying to go back in, trying to find a way to counter. He does, and he has a sword finisher, and he able to get it. He's going to land a nice pop off. It just throws him around like a toy. And oh, here we go. We talk about the agility. I win this track. Kuro Kuro. Kuro Kuro. Onto the chest of Finn Balor. Still his move. And not even a one count here, Frank. Oh, ain't no way. Because, like, if Gunther does a coup de grace, there's a hole in your chest, period, point blank. Mm. You look like where Vegeta landed. Like, that's it. It's over. <laughs> he's Jeez. kicking out before one? Stop playing with me. <laughs> yeah, he's, I'm not going to go out like Yamcha. I'm not going to be in a hole and just get in the crater. I'm going to no. fight my way back in. What I'm saying is when he lands, the crater's in you. You're not in the oh. hole. The hole is in you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But right now, we're seeing, again, Jinja. He is the champ for a reason. He's able to find a way to counter and not get pinballed so easily. And again, as well as he even gets the first pinball against him, he still has another opportunity. So he's still in his fight. But right now, you see the ring general taking ownership of the ring, has his opponent into the corner, just attacking the midsection as he usually does. And now you see the sun meter. Finn Balor, Jinja cannot reverse any maneuvers, but Cryptomania is not close to a finisher, but he will he get now. it now. Yeah, honestly, Kingsley, matches like this make me so happy that I'm in this chair, even if I do have to be next to you. I mean, right. because it's so much better than being in there with Gunther. Listen, as soon, as soon as you want, like after this whole event, we could duke it out as soon as possible. I can run I it right now, my man. Wait. We can run it right now, but hey, we're going we to just as a professional we got a Mexican ten. We'll sell this later. But as you see, Gunther not taking any liberties, any mercy on his opponent, just like what I'm going to do to you after this event. As you see, Gunther, Cryptomania is doing such an amazing job keeping his opponent down, even though he knows that his opponent is going to get back up. He keeps on trying to stop him down and down as much as he can. But right now, seeing Jinja trying to find a way to get a reversal, but the dodges are not going to work to his benefit. I'm sorry, Kingsley. Uh, don't mind me. I'm still looking around for who the hell you were talking to because I know oh, it wasn't yeah. me. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's in the guy in the similar shirt as me. Maybe maybe that will give you an inclination of what's happening. But as You're we see do here... Like, it like that. As Gunter gets him up for the power <laughs> ball, As we see a pitfall for nope. the power ball, as a kick out as that joke was. Before one. Just okay. before one. It's gonna, it's gonna take a lot here, Frank. We know that these competitors have been through a lot, but again, Gunther, another power bomb. His fourth power bomb, going for a pinfall right here. He finally got a one count. It only took four power bombs. <laughs> four <laughs> power bombs is not enough. Maybe he needs to go to the announcer table, or maybe he needs to turn, take off the turnbuckle and like uncover a little bit. Maybe Listen. that'll help. If I had my huthers and druthers, he would just pick you up and start swinging you around. That would be the you know, most ideal. That's why you don't have the connections. That's why you can't do it yet. Oh, but a vicious slam. Maybe a little bit of a overbelly the belly from Gunther, but a vicious slam onto the body of Finn Balor. And Finn Balor getting tossed into the corner right here. And, yeah, this is... Oh, I, I, another one. I, I'm, I'm trying to see what he can do. He can't do another coup de gras, can he? I don't... God, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> We, we might actually see an actual hole inside the ring because we know how much of a big boy Gunther is, but Finn Balor trying to find his way back into this. But again, every single chop, every single kick is just bringing him down more and more into the depths. This is where you have to hunker down into the deep water. And by the way, oh, but a low blow! And his extreme rule, so it... it 
That's extreme oh. rules. Oh my That's god! Extreme rules. You saw it me. Happened. I was like, did he? Did he get the the pinfall? No. Nineteen seventeen lands. It connects. He is taunting. He is mad at his opponent. Ginger, the champion, is taking advantage, and he's gonna do it again. Nineteen seventeen times two pinfall attempt. The champ will he get the first fall? One. Oh, only a one count again. We're gonna have to see four of those to even get a pinfall. We are, but hey, I I can say one thing for certain, Ginger, you have shown yourself to be a true champion. That 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 man is in there, willing to do whatever he needs to do to come oh. out with his title. I'm proud of the effort. I can't wait. I I, I hope he's able to get it done because he's shown that he is willing to do what he needs to do to get it done. You know, I forgot. I thought you were actually going to give someone respect for doing the right thing, but I forgot he did a low blow. <laughs> so my instant regret phase just happened. I was like, right. He did do a low blow, and now we're dealing with shenanigans. But again, string rules, it's legal. I can't be mad at it. Oh, and we almost saw Finn Balor try to go for a springboard right there. But Gunther able to get out of the way and not really take the advantage. And this is Mark from Cryptomania. He knows that his opponent has a springboard. He needs to do something crazy, but it's only in a straight line. He can't go in a different way. And you see <laughs> Jinko trying to force the action, but falls into the trap of Gunther. And Gunther is going to take advantage outside of the ring. I'm going to be honest. Crypto just broke his ankles on that one. <laughs> he oh, made a thing. Oh, yeah, over right. and one. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he went through the legs and everything. And <laughs> I'm sorry. I love the disrespect there. Oh, you want to get back in the ring? All right. Yeah, try yeah. it again. <laughs> okay. Just because we're all a fan of French Prince doesn't mean you have to throw him like Jazzy Jeff. But right now we're seeing Jinja. <laughs> He's trying to recover. He's finding a way back. He's getting closer to a finisher, but not so close into a sixer. Actually, a nice step away. But again, Gunther being pissed with a vicious form. Tosses him through the ropes. And all right uh -oh. now. Uh-oh. Two bells of the bell rug? Shout out to Sheamus. Just <laughs> banger after banger after banger. And it, it's just continuously happening. We might see a 10 count from the referee. And it's got, oh, he just punches him to the side <laughs> of the head, trying to knock him down. What the hell's happening here? Hey, sometimes you just got to throw a potato in there to let him know. They so, must have had some heat backstage, and he's just letting them know. <laughs> yeah, so we're, we're just seeing, like, shoot uh, DDT, shoot punches and everything. Like, <laughs> slow down here, brother. But Gunther, to his credit, even though he's going to hit a punch, he's close to his signature. He has a finisher, and a DDT will bust Gunther open. Now we're seeing a crimson mask, but a possible pin will change the momentum. Referee going for the count into a two. Oh, it's a three. Oh, he steals the victory. He steals the first fall for uh from Jinja. Now he is one pinball away from being crowned the new champion. I can't believe he did it with the most devastating move in sports entertainment, the surprise roll-up. It claims another victim. Now he's halfway to getting this title. He's just got to get one more pinfall. And he's already hit him with 73 power bombs. So, hey, maybe one more is the charm. Yeah, but no. a good counter from Ginger right there saying, now it's time to get down to business. I gave you one. I can't let you get another one again. But he needs to avoid these strikes. He needs to avoid this little hip toss. But he's stunned right here. And now Gunther, Crypto, uh, Cryptomania has the signature. He's just got to keep on doing some punishes. Throws him to the ropes. Oh, and a vicious elbow to the face of Finn Balor. Huge back elbow. You got to wonder why he didn't go for a signature there. But, hey, he's he knows what he's doing, clearly, because <laughs> he's he's hitting moves like that. So he's got a, a good idea of what he needs to do to, to get this, to, to finish this victory. Oh yeah, but goodness. this is everything oh, he does just looks scary. Like, <laughs> and just like not even lift him up from like his like chest, he lifts him up from his legs, using all his willpower from his squats to lift him over his shoulder. And you see Gunther, I, I wonder what he's trying to do. We saw a little bit of a signature or finisher being prompted up from the lower body of Gunther, but not able to take advantage. But we see Jinja. He has got the down. Now he needs to find a way. Oh, but again, the reversals oh. into a Pele kick. Nice. And that's an opportunity. But a great uh, get up there by Gunther. He, he can't put himself into the drop zone for that oh, coup de gras. But he can just uh. drop, bro, and, and not have to worry about that. Yeah, and now with that finisher not going for a pin, he might think that Finn Balor has a resiliency. Oh, a headbutt to the back? i never seen that before. Who the hell headbutts uh, someone in the back? Trying mean to disrupt people. the person's spy. Very yes. mean people. <laughs> like, that's, that's, oh my God. That's what, oh, this oh my God. Uh. He does this looks mean. Yeah. He's just bullying him. And I, for one, love to see it. 
I it, it's just it well like what will it end? He had an opportunity for go for a pin. Oh and he's going for even more chops. He I knows love... that this title means the world to him and he wants to claim it for his first ever time. In the funniest story about Cryptomania, he was 0-3 in the last season going to his way to ESFLW Mania. He was 0-3. And the fact that he's undefeated in this new season and taking it to the champ, the complete turnaround that he's had so far has been astonishing. And he wants to capitalize it with another pin. But a Pele kick will change plans instantly for Cryptomania. As we see, Jinja has two sword finishers and a signature. He could possibly do something right here. Yeah, uh... Uh, what a moment this is for, for both of these guys. Ginger is starting that uphill climb to try and retain that title that he has worked and fought so hard for. But as you just said, the, the story behind crypto, I wasn't I wasn't aware of all of that going into it. Uh, mm -hmm. This guy could be a face of perseverance if he's able to, to pull this out and get that title victory. So now I'm rooting for him a little bit more. Oh, oh! Now we're, we're flipping sides. Now I thought you were with uh, Ginger because he did a low blow. Now we're going to Cryptomania side. We pick winners around here. All right. Well, right now we're seeing so far Cryptomania is winning. He is up one fall to zero. If he gets another one, that is it. But if Ginger is able to get a pinfall, that means we're all tied up and it goes to a decisive tie-breaking fall in the third one. But so far. Outside the ring, you can't get a pin outside. You need to get a pin inside. And we're seeing vicious chops again from Cryptomania using Gunther and just stomping on the chest. We went from Gunther for having such a big health lead in this contest now to both guys getting very low in with their bar he bar health and their head health and body health. So you think it's still anyone's game here? Yeah, but I mean that's just oh my goodness. That's what happens when you get you know one of these talented angry individuals in front of you man you never you can never rest or relax because at any given moment you're getting handled straight up like and oh, now what? oh my goodness oh my god the final symphony trying to put the finishing touches on this thing but outside of the ring you're giving finn more chances to recover and he takes one to do just that yeah and it's gonna take a lot for ben, finn Balor to get dragged out inside the ring from the outside because even though you hit the finisher outside there's a process of throwing him inside making sure he doesn't count on you when you go for the pin he needs to do everything in his power to make sure all the action happens inside for jinja the current champion for him to stay outside the ring and do as much damage have three star finishers this is perfect for him do as much damage as you can with a vicious pay like kick right there his favorite move so far this is working out to his benefit and now turn about fair play with the stunts of for himself yeah man he's um <clears throat> he's showing just how much this this title means to him and you know what he's he's willing to to endure to get it because gunther for all intents and purposes has been oh. beating the hell out of him yeah and and gets a good reversal on the 1916 there yeah you saw it. it he tried to go for it's a kill up into a finisher trying to disrupt the timing predictability that he was going for but with that a nine it. meter like that with a power bomb that could be it will we One, see a new champ two. for the xbox side no, no not just yet <laughs> and this title match continues but man i listen the way it's going so far we might walk out here with a new champion kingsley yeah he's been hitting power bombs so many times and now with vicious knee into the dome it's oh and now he's busted open finn balor vicious knee is trying to treat it like a sprawl side control oh but it's Ooh. 1916 Ooh. lands on gunther and oh my god oh, he yes. has a stun meter the coup de gras let's show him how it's really done finn balor oh. lands the target going for a pinfall will he tie it up no he will not Bro, are you kidding me what 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 is it gonna take like how do you what do you do what do you do the championship stakes calls for championship kickouts and championship maneuvers that is what is on the line here and so far now we're in an even kill both guys have fairly low stamina bars and fairly low signature bars so but cryptomania still has a chance he was able to kick out so that gave him a little bit more but right now what wait what's he doing on the ropes what what no hold on Gunther, oh, what, man. what in the hell Gunther, man, you can't do this spin spine oh to the apron the hardest part of the ring with a back suplex and now oh my god now he's now he's trying to victimize his opponent he's trying to brutalize him till he's a bloody pulp here frank honestly like he might kill him 
I'm I don't I'm not I'm not trying to be funny. Like he might kill him. That 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 back suplex onto the hardest part of the ring in the apron into this power slam. How is Finn still able to get up? I uh, the fact that he can barely walk or even walk. The fact that Gunther has to lift him up for a gun wrench suplex. It's just damaging. That's, he's just strong, laying on bro. his back every single time. <laughs> and think about it. He had the chops on his back, chops on his chest. Everywhere that midsection has to be hurting like hell. And with a big boot like that, that will plant Finn Balor <laughs> down to it. the ground. And that has to be a stun meter. Oh, my God. Oh, he's going to try to talk about it. He can't go for a submission there. He has to oh, let go. Right, yeah. Again, ASFLW rolls, and that's only his saving grace. But again, he could have gone for a power up, but now that leads for a reversal, and he loses sword finisher. Ah, uh, but and I think he reversed Finn's finisher. Yeah, back back and forth. A back-to-back -back finisher, both reverse in the timing. Needs to be very careful. So it's a recovery that could do some damage. But right now, circling around, knowing that one more finisher could be it. They used everything. But now, tossing him into the corner. Tries to do some crazy, but Finn Balor able to reverse it. Finn. Oh, I think he was trying again. to go for finisher again, but I think he messed up. Oh, Pele. Yeah, he's loving that Pele kick, but hey, it keeps working. So why why not, right? Yeah, it's been his bread and butter so far to get Gunther down. But now going for a net breaker again. Ooh. Jinja has an opportunity. He's stomping on the head. A Gunther. Oh, but a reversal. Okay. Mid game. Footsie oh, game. He tried it. He tried for a Mr. Dropkick. Oh, a turnaround spare play. Going for a school bit <laughs> a school board right here. One. Two. Oh, had to use the resiliency. He knew he was gonna get out with his own move. Yeah, I, I admire the gamesmanship, right? Because you can, you're still up a pin. You can probably just eat that one and make him use some of his mm. resources. But he, he's like, nah, I, I can't let him beat me with the surprise roll up. So I enjoy the, uh, like I said, the gamesmanship from Crypto. We'll see if yeah. he's able to parlay that into to getting this victory. Or is, is Finn going to be able to find his momentum, hit a couple of those finishers, and even this thing up, and then potentially go on to retain his title? Yeah, he might need to do two, and that's what uh, Jinja did not need, was Gunther to go outside the ring. Now at least an opportunity where J uh, Cryptomania can find his way back in. Oh, but they're <laughs> going to go back in, and now we're in the mid game. Oh, a nice low drop kick says I beat their, your high drop kick with that <laughs> low one, and now it's up to Finn Balor. Can he use the 1916? Can he use the coup de grace? He has a signature. He could go for a Jawu, uh drop kick. If he's able to get the chance, but oh, again, here comes Jeez. the chops to the chest, to the head. Everything working so well for Cryptomania. Yeah, man. Uh, he's on a roll right now. And honestly, the rest of the locker room needs to be uh, at least a little nervous because whoever, whoever comes out of this match with that title is going to be a tall task to dethrone. Yeah, we know that both these guys are undefeated. So trying to beat them in a mid-card match, that... Could have been a lot easier than what he had to do in the championship title match because both of these wrestlers have tried to find a way to pin each other, use so many finishers, and the fact that we're going to a maneuver like that, trying to work on their arms, there's so much that you like you could do, but the fact mm -hmm. that you can't put them down fully, that's going to be the big plot point of whoever comes out of this. Yeah, absolutely. Whoever comes out of this is going to be looking indestructible. It's just a matter of who is going to make it out of this. Yeah, and right now you see a nice European uppercut. Oh, but a nice kip up from Gunther. Actually, just a reversal. It's a standing back up, not a kip up. But yes, two sword finishers. Actually, both have two sword finishers. Barely any health left. The stump gets reversed and now back into the making. Oh, but the drop kick lands finally for Gunther. And now he's bringing Finn Balor up. We might see the writing on the wall as he throws his opponent to the corner. He's not thinking, I think, oh, I thought he was going to try to bring him up to the high top row because I, I know too. he has a power bump from that area. But right here, oh, he was able to get the hitbox to land on 1916. That is huge. And is he going to go for a pin? He is going for a pin. Okay, can he tie it up? No resiliency. Two, three. And it's all tied up here, Frank. Yeah, but honestly, that might not be the best thing for Ginger because as you notice, on a pinfall, Gunther's health goes back to orange. So now you got to do all that work again. Obviously, mm. it's going to come back faster. You know, you're, you're, once you hit him, he'll start turning red again. But the point that I'm making is that little three seconds gives him a little bit of respite. That might be all of the, the 
the relief that he needs to finish out this match strong. Yeah, you can see Finn Balor, Jinja, was trying to go for a coup de gras, but Sal Gunther was getting up, and it was too short of time. And you see Finn Balor circling outside the ring, trying to find the time. He's trying to find a way where he can hit his finisher, but Gunther is ready. Oh, but gets hit with a Pele. That works so well. You can see the face is getting even more bloody for uh, Gunther. But Gunther still has an opportunity to get out of this. But working on the arms again for Jinja, saying, if you can't lift me up, there's no way you can win this uh, whole contest. But Finn Beller still needs to find a way to get his finisher going. And Look now he's going to the high red. Is he going to try to work the spine? Nope. He's going for Kuduro misses. Oh, here we go. He found the right timing. Cryptomania. Will we see a new chip? Your new Xbox Series chip. Cryptomania has complete the comeback and is your new ESFLW Xbox Series X champion. Wow, wow, wow. That was a fantastic performance. And like you had mentioned earlier, 0-3 in the last season, that's what you call uh, what do they what do they say? A minor setback for a major comeback, and that's what we just saw. He was able to complete that and uh, you know finish Gunther's story. <laughs> and now we've got a new was that Xbox Series X champion? Yeah, the, he's the sure. new Xbox Series X champion. Jinja finally lose finally loses out of all his competitions. He went through elimination chamber matches, went through ladder <laughs> matches, title matches, the whole gambit. But the one who finally took him down was a guy who was 0-3 in the last season. Now 3-0 to become your new Xbox Series X champion. Congratulations to Cryptomania for their absolute amazing turnaround to become the new yes. champ here, Frank. Yeah, fantastic performance by both of these individuals. Now, I'm not trying to do your job, although I could if I wanted to and do it way oh, better okay. than you. Mm -hmm. But if I was... I would be kind of starting to pencil in some kind of rematch. And if that one was two out of three falls, uh, maybe you can you know, institute maybe an Iron Man with some falls counting anywhere nonsense that was potentially mentioned earlier by a genius and very handsome individual on this uh, screen. But that's just yeah. me personally off the top of my head. You know, you're, you're talking about the guy with glasses, right? Like that. No. that's the guy. You, no, not even a little bit. But you, you, but come on, <laughs> I have some good qualities, but also you're kind of running out of fact. We'll have to see what the future is for the Xbox Series X title, along with the PlayStation title, and the fact that we got a new women's champion and Johnny B. That we have so many titles on the line, especially our underrated division still needs to get their champion uh, mm -hmm. crown as soon as possible. So the next time we're back with that is going to be back in July. So hopefully later down the summer, we'll get all those new champions crown. We'll have more answers for the questions that we have from this whole card. But it's mm -hmm. been absolutely amazing. But going for the whole round to give your summary about this whole ESFLW Anarchy card. What is your thoughts about this whole situation here, Frank? Man, no, in all serious, again, you know, I, just, I had to get the third one. Um, no, that was a great event. Um, I'm, I'm gonna be honest from a personal standpoint. What can we do to stop people from kicking out of getting shot in the face? Like <laughs> these people are getting just destroyed. Hey, that just that's a testament to their skill. They're really good at kicking out, man. So yeah. shout out to everybody who was in this event. You guys all put on fantastic matches. It was a ton of fun to watch, Kingsley. Begrudgingly, I thank you for having me. Um, You're welcome. Because yeah, you wouldn't the, be here if it wasn't without me. <laughs> they justified the means. The good match is made up for you and your smell. But smell? You until, can't even smell me. Until what? next time. <laughs> well, before we go, before we go, let's remind you guys that again, next week, June 4th, is our ESFL reunion. That's going to be taking place in the UFC card. We're going to have all your favorite guys, Bailey and Bruce Lee Rob, all the people are going to be back. We're going to give you a UFC card. It's going to be so amazing. And then after that, June 11th is going to be ESFL, ESFL Undisputed. Undisputed is coming to the new season. We're going to have a whole bunch of cards, uh, new champions for every single situation. It's going to be absolutely incredible. And then we'll be back with some ESFLW. But before we go again, Frank, where can the people find you in the other uh, associated channels? Man, you got to find me out outside. I don't really do too much online these days. No, but in all seriousness, if you want to follow me on Twitter, that's Frank No Tweeting. You can follow me on Twitch, Frank No Streaming. If you're looking for me, put Frank No, and if I don't pop up, I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
and Frank no winning in this next contest when you face me undisputed. But it, where you can find me, uh, you can see me on the Twitter handle King AHTK. When you want to get the latest updates about the ESFLW and ESFL, and also you can sign up for our Discord. ESFL is always looking for new people for undisputed UFC and also WWE. So if you guys want to join that along with all these other cards, be sure to do so. Check our library on YouTube and our library on tw uh, Twitch where you can follow, subscribe, do all that jazz. But for me, for Kingsley, for Frank, we thank you guys for being here. We hope you enjoy the rest of the wrestling weekend. It's going to be a bit of a banger and then enjoy the new season. But for well, for their due, for thank you for the crew and the, everyone supporting us here. We'll see you guys at the next fight night. Peace out. Already fry. Oh, beautiful counter to the takedown. Thank you for joining us tonight. The disadvantage was I have put in. He oh, 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 o